You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by M Prize Bank, your partner in possible. Back here on the Three Mod Pod, John Kurtz, Cole Manbeck, Derek Young. We are live from Big 12 Media Days at uh, T Mobile Center, the artist formerly known as Sprint Center in Kansas City. And uh, we got a chance to talk with the head man of the Wildcats, Jerome Tang, uh, man of the people in Manhattan, certainly these days. Very entertaining to, uh, to speak with him. And interesting to talk to a guy with, you know, kind of a different perspective here. He's not used to coming to this as an assistant. You don't, you don't get the, the assignment to come to Big 12 Media Days. Now he does, and I'm sure has been quite popular here throughout the day. But just to explain this on the front end, Derek was not with us when we first started this interview okay so Derek is going to pop in because he just kind of slithered his way in there and got in you know as DY does he has to be a part of everything so you know sorry I have two jobs here today fresh fresh (laughs) off fresh off the plane from Cabo DY just went straight from Cabo and uh and flight delays into uh, a Jerome Tang interview I parachuted out of the plane just for this yeah he did and you know what you know what I bet you had a lot of in Cabo DY 360 vodka. <laughs> 360 vodka and Ben Holiday bottled and bond bourbon, baby. I'm sure that they've got it out in Cabo, but I know that they've got it if you're uh, within earshot of this podcast. So check that out. Holiday Distillery, great supporters here of the pod. Great K-State folks uh, who do a great job supporting us, so please support them. Load up for the game this weekend. Ben Holiday bottled and bond bourbon, 360 vodka, whatever your poison of choice actually is. So. Is there 360 vodka and pina coladas? Because that's what I had. Okay. Well, there probably was. <laughs> DY puts his in pina coladas. You can do whatever it is you want. You can. I'm not going to suggest that you do it in pina coladas, but uh, I suppose if you are uh, beachside in Cabo, that's that's a bit of a different vibe. Uh, Jerome Tang, I don't think he's doing a lot of that right now. He's pretty locked in, serious, ready to go. But uh, we had a great chat with him here at Big 12 Media Days, and here is that. All right, we're back here on the Three Mod Pod. I am John Kurtz. Cole Manbeck is with me. And, of course, you guys know who this is, Jerome Tang, head coach of the Kansas State Wildcats. We appreciate you taking the time. It's great to have you on in person where we have no technical difficulties because if you remember that first time we had you on, man, you were a trooper battling through the technical difficulties. Ken Palm was trying to call you. It was just crazy. <laughs> but we got it all figured out, and now we can do this in person. So thank you for sitting down with us. Oh, we no appreciate problem. it. Thanks for having me. What's it like being here as, as a head coach now? I mean, I guess as an assistant, you're not typically coming to this event, right? What's it like being here at Media Days? No, it's pretty cool. Like, I didn't I didn't expect it, you know, to sit in the car waiting, talking to my wife about coming in. I'm just like, I just want to make sure, you know, I don't say anything dumb, you know, like put too much pressure on the guys or come off arrogant, you know, just all the things that you're concerned about and talking to reporters, right? And then the first person I see when I come in to talk to is King McClure. Oh, yeah. So one of my former guys. And it was just like just to see him in his role as an ESPN reporter. And, you know, now he's going to interview me. And, you know, I mean, I was in the gym when he's an eighth grader. You know, we offered him as an eighth grader. There, I was saying. And so, like, the emotions kind of got going. And so it was pretty cool. That is really, really cool. That's a great story there. What, what has the start of practice been like? Awesome. For your guys so far. Awesome. Guys have gotten after it. Uh, we're getting better every day. Um, we just, like, it, it's, you know, it's like one foot in front of the other, and we're not looking down the road. It's just, hey, what, what do we need to improve on today? And they've been great about focusing on that. And, uh, thank, thankfully, uh, we've had no serious injuries, and, um, and so we get to keep moving forward, getting better. Yeah. What do you think the, the staple or the trademark of this team is going to be? Well, the goal is for it to be rebounding, right? We want to be a gritty team that is tough, and we rebound the basketball. And we're not there yet, but that's where we want to get to. We had you on in April. Um, You had to sign 10 guys since then, and then you've obviously built a a great recruiting class in 23 so far as well. What, What have these last few months been like for you? Man, it's been awesome. You know, I, I think I know that hiring the right staff has put us in a situation where the sky's the limit for our program because uh, they're they're terrific men and they they've got like this great energy about them and they know how to like rally the troops you know and then not bring in they're the kind of guys they're the guys I would want to spend an off day with and that's really the environment that, that I want in our program that 
if you guys came and visited when you left, you'd say, man, it felt like we was at a family reunion, you know, and uh, so we, we know what we got to do, and uh, we understand the kind of guys that we need within our program, and those guys have a great eye, and they do a great job of connecting, and, and so that's why we've been off to this great start. And it's very evident, by the way, when you see, you know, the karaoke party or whatever, that we got a little insight to that this is a, a real tight-knit family that you guys have developed here so far. I want to ask a little bit. I was asking Marquise about this a second ago. I saw the picture on social media from Phil Byer of Bebe and how much his body has changed since he got there. Can you speak to, like, the job Phil Byer is doing right now and getting your guys ready to go out there and compete night in, night out? Because it, it looked like an incredible transformation since no, he got here. No, um, I'm going to just tell you, when I, in all the years preparing to be a head coach, I – fully understood uh, from watching Scott and Charlie Melton work and seeing what Charlie did with our guys at Baylor that the strength coach and the trainers were the two most important hires. And as I was getting closer to being the head coach, I would always ask Coach Charlie, hey, who's, who's really good out there? Who's really good out there? And Phil's name just kept coming up over and over. And then Phil worked with Grant McCaslin at North Texas before he went to Miami. And Miami's coming off in the lead eight, right? They lose to go to the you know, final yep. four. And mm -hmm. Phil's feet are in the sand when I get the job. And I call him and I say, man, I need you. And he hops in the car and drives to Manhattan, Kansas. And, I mean, that dude is he's special. Really, he, he connects with our guys. He is, has the ability to explain the whys. This is why we're doing what we're doing and uh, give him a plan. And I told him our number one goal through the summer was to create Big 12 bodies because we didn't have Big 12 bodies. And now we got some guys that have big 12 bodies well john mentions Bebe's body transformation but talking about Bebe, have you been impressed with his athleticism and his ability to switch I, I read a quote from you i think in the basketball almanac that you guys have been really impressed with how athletic he is and his ability to switch on defense well yeah no his lateral movement is uh, a lot better than i expected and phil has played a part in that jarrell colbert i don't know if you saw his picture yep. from his lsu picture to to now and i mean he's just a changed person so, uh, yeah, I've been not just Bebe, but, I mean, you go down the line, uh, Dorian Finister has put on 18 pounds of muscle. Wow. And shown up, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, Phil's doing a great job. Keontae, obviously, a lot of headlines, former SEC preseason player of the year and a guy that's done this at a really high level with Power 5 basketball. Just what's, the, what's it been like trying to get him ramped back up? Because when you, you go that long, obviously, without playing a game, it, it's, I'm sure, going to take some time to get into basketball shape. What are you seeing on, on that front from him right now? Uh, well, Keontae was playing basketball before he got to us, you know, and he was out there doing some things. So um, it was just about getting in uh, college basketball shape, you know, and where you're competing every day, bodies are hitting each other and, and working himself through that. But he didn't lose the talent that God gave him, nor uh, I think he's even more appreciative of the opportunity to play the game. And so that, that's that been great. But, I mean, more than being a preseason SEC player of the year, he's a he's a all, all first-team, all-American teammate, right? Like, if you see his teammates around him and how they interact off the court and just, you know, how much they care for him and he cares for them, I mean, that, that, that puts it over the top. Yeah. What was the significance of adding a guy like Keontae? Where can he lift this team? <laughs> uh, man, Keontae has the ability to be Big 12 Player of the Year, right? Like, that's what's inside of him. And we hopefully can give him the opportunity to display some of that. And, you know, we don't have a timetable for when that's going to happen. Uh, our goal is just him to continue to get better, you know, every day. One, we say get 1% better. And we want to get 1% better, and, and that, that's, that's a whole team goal. Let's get 1% better. And so, Are there other guys that have jumped out to you with what they've done so far in practice for the first couple of weeks? Um, you know, all of them have shown glimpses of, of special things. You know, I, I just, for me, I'm always thinking, like, big picture, you know, even as we're getting better. And uh, Taj Manning and Dorian Finister have both, like, made – huge like exactly what I would hope for them to do you know and I mean changing their bodies their motors their their work ethic just all those things and so you see two guys that you're not expecting right they could help you this year but you're not expecting it right and but the future looks really good 
because you're like, man, we'll get to coach this guy for three or four more years. As, as I look at this roster, we see a lot of coaches like to whittle down their depth to seven, eight guys in the rotation, right? It, but it feels like you've got 10, 12. You mentioned even Taj and, and Dorian could potentially play. I mean, how do you handle the rotations and, and getting all these guys on the court? Well, you know, coaches don't determine playing time. Players do. So those guys are going to determine who's out there on the floor. And, uh, and then matchups will determine it, like what gives us the best chance to win tonight. And so um, right now we're just trying to figure out who can compete at a consistent level, you know, that gives us the best chance to win. Do you feel like positionalist basketball, is that something that you really like? And do you feel like you've got a roster where guys are so versatile that can play all over the floor? I look at a guy like Keontae who can play on the perimeter but also down low. What do you make of, of your roster from that standpoint? No, I do believe that we have a group of guys um, – a few of them that are positionless and will be able to figure out who has the mismatch out on the floor. Um, you know, obviously, if you're guard heavy, you're going to play a certain way. If you're forward heavy, you're going to play a different way. And right now, you know, I think the strength of our team is that, that we have guys who can play multiple positions. So it's up to us to figure out the best way to put them in position to take advantage of that. How good can Naquan be? Oh, he, he can be really good. He's as talented of a kid as I've ever coached. Um, he just doesn't know it, has some growing maturity-wise to do and stuff, but uh, I expect him to be a really good player come January. Usually takes Juco guys a semester yeah. you know, to, to get into it and, and everything, to figure some things out. So, Well, along those lines, I mean, Desi, I'm sure you guys were excited to get in. He came in a little bit late. So what, what do you anticipate is like the time frame for getting him – ready to go and be out on the floor. Uh, Desi's such a competitor, and he's done it for a while and, and won every place he's been. And so, you know, I'm, in, in a couple of weeks, he'll be, his body's going to be in shape. And, you know, mentally, he already knows pretty much everything we're doing because we've been watching practice yep. and stuff. And, and so um, it'll, it'll be a couple of weeks, but uh, he, he, he'll be rocking and rolling real quick. Marquise mentioned that – on every locker, I believe is what he said in the locker room, the standings of the preseason predictions in the Big 12 are taped up there. How, how much, in your experience, how much of a motivating factor can that be for a team, something like that? You know, we always say that if you need outside motivation to drive you, then, you know, you're not going to be very good. I, I believe that we have this internal thing on the inside of us, all of us, that, you know, we feel like well, there's nothing that we can't accomplish and I want that to be the motivating factor. Um, as a coach, it's always nice to have some, you know, yeah. outside stuff to throw at him every now and then. So Look, look at this guy that just shows up here, hey. you know, <laughs> just pops in. Sleeping on the job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coach, when you look at your schedule this year, is this kind of the, the schedule that you envision, like, every year in terms of, you know, mid-major to majors? Um, you know, I inherited this schedule. The only game that we picked up was the Cal schedule. Uh, my, my goal, I mean, we play in the best league in America, so every year we're going to play 18 high major games. Uh, my goal in the future is to bring some really good teams to Bramlage, you know, so our fans in Manhattan uh, can experience a high-level non-conference game, a couple of them a year, that will go along with the SEC and the, you know, the Big East Challenge. And so if we can do that and then you know you got to balance it out the other way but our goal is to get some some high level teams in in another coach speak answer is that every game is you know you're the same ways the same but do you do you circle the baylor game or any game on the schedule no no i don't um then that that's not coach speak not coach speak, right yeah. it's not 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 coach speak because um we, we ask the question when the year start what game will cost you the ncaa tournament and the answer is you don't know, right? And so we have to, every game is important, every day is important, every play is important. And that, that's how we try to think. You've made it a point of emphasis to engage with the students and the K-State fans. Can you just maybe speak to that and how well you've related to them? I mean, you, you jump in the stands, multiple games, you killed the chant in one week, essentially, the <laughs> KU chant. I've been blown away with that and your ability to relate. Can you maybe speak to your, your thoughts on that and, and how you find the time to do that? Well, I, I don't know that it's been that big of a deal. Like, it's just, I mean, I've waited 19 years, 20 years to be a head coach, right? And 
you're you're I'm not like we're not in a silo, right? This this program belongs to the the students at the university and and the alumni, and so if if they uh, entrust me with it, then you know to be a part of it, then I got to be a part of the whole thing. So I, I just I really I, I I've been blown away by how many people think like that's such an incredible thing just because we have such great students you know like i'd I'd never been to a fraternity or sorority in my life right so there are no fraternity houses or sorority houses at baylor so my first uh, fraternity house thing that i went to was farmhouse right and when you talk about culture Right. Every one of those guys shake your hand, great handshake, looks you in the eyes, introduces themselves. They sing songs at dinner. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, they're so proud of their alumni that have graduated from there and, and what they have in, that, in their home and their, you know, I mean, I, I, I was blown away by the culture. And I'm like, man, that's what I, I want people to walk into our basketball facility and feel the way they made me feel and then i've had dinner at a couple sororities and it's the same thing and and every one of those organizations uh are so philanthropic and in they want to do something for somebody else you know whether it's breast cancer or you know um you know uh, abuse or you know orphaned i mean there's just been so many things that that i've seen our students raise money for and and want to be a part of and how can you not embrace that and, and, you know, the thing with the chant, man, I, I think the leadership of all the student organizations got together and say, said, look, we don't want to uh, let that school up the road take one of our traditions, right? And uh, this has got to be about KSU. And our students were smart enough and caring enough to embrace that, that it's going to be about KSU. And so, so yeah. Sandstorm yeah. next? <laughs> sandstorm? Yes, yes. We're, we're, we're going to get stand, Sandstorm, and our students are going to embrace it, and it's going to be about KSU, and uh, there's going to be thousands of people out there, and particularly uh, young men between the ages of <laughs> you know, 16 and 18 that are going to want to be in that environment, you know, and their parents are going to want them in that environment around that kind of family, and, um, and we're, we're going to have that place rocking and rolling. Love that. I think a lot of people are going to love hearing that. How do you, when you talk to the team, when you're talking about goals and motivation for this year, do you talk about it in terms of, hey, winning a Big 12 championship? Is it making the NCAA tournament? How, how do you frame what the, the goal or expectation is for this year's team? Go 1-0. Oh. We go 1-0 okay. oh each, each day and in each aspect of the day. So that we get up and eat breakfast this morning. And if we got up and ate a good breakfast this morning, we went one and no one, then we're going to reset. Then did we get to the gym early and get up shots before practice? And if we did that, then it's, we went one and no one, then we're going to reset and practice. Did we uh, compete at our highest level? Right? Did, we, did we stretch ourselves? And if we did that, we went one and no one. And then after practice, did we do our recovery? You know, with Phil and, and with Luke and, and we went one and no And then were we on time for Mary Claire? Right, and if we're on time for Mary Claire for for study hall and all the things in classes, we want to know. And then when classes are done, right, then we reset and well, then we come back to the gym and get up some more shots. And then we want to know. And then we eat, you know, just all the things that every day. And if we go want to know more times during the day, then we went zero and one. And if you don't, if you went zero and one, then guess what you get to do? You re reset it and let's go win the next thing. Because our definition of tough toughness is the ability to do the next right thing. And we want guys, we're going to make mistakes, right? We're going to have a turnover that we sprint back on defense, right? That we do the next right thing, you know? And so that, that's, uh, that's how we approach every day. And we talk about winning the day. And if that happens, then at the end of the year, you guys are going to be asking me some different questions. It's become clear to me that you guys really value Phil Byers' input in the program and what he does for your players. But is it almost more important in year one? Because of what you're trying to create and build from the ground? Well, you know, I learned it from, you know, watching Scott and uh, Charlie Melton uh, that your strength coach and your trainers, your trainer, Luke, are your most important hires, right? The uh, strength coach, they spend more time with the guys than we get to spend with them. And so uh, Charlie told me when I was at Baylor over and over, he'd say Phil Byer was the guy. Phil Byer is the guy. And I was blessed to be able to get a job at a place that we could afford to get Phil Blyer from Miami coming off in the lead eight. You know, and so, I mean, he's, he's one of the best in the country, and if not the best. And 
Yes, it's very important to, because, I mean, it's not just about putting on muscle. It's about the ability to recover and, you know, what they need to do next to be at their very best because it doesn't do any good if you're big, strong, and fast and injured. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, yeah. <laughs> so, best availability. Yeah. Best ability is available. Yeah, got to <laughs> be available, especially on those 40 nights a year. And you want to be able to be at your peak on those 40 nights a year. And so, you know, I mean, those guys, Luke and Phil, really help with that guiding and in, in what we do and how we do it. Coach, I know we're, we're talking about this upcoming season and we're on the heels of that starting, but as we look toward 2023 recruiting class, I know we can't talk specifics, but you got three commitments. Do you have an idea on how many high school kids you'd like to take and then leave an opening or two for the transfer portal, or, or what's your thoughts on, on the roster composition and how you handle that? Um, you know, you want to balance the roster, but we're going to lose some experienced guys this year, so we're going to have to be able to replace uh, with experience. Um, experience trumps talent you know right now i think we're with what uh some of the young men who have said they want to come to k-state uh we've got some talent there and now we got to blend that with some experience well as you look at this roster i think i look you got five guys that have over 800 points in their career played 90 plus games you've keontae would be over a thousand too if it wasn't for the the incident medical incident of florida do you feel good about the balance of experienced guys that have been through it before and then maybe those higher upside guys like Cam and Jarrell and, and some of those younger guys that are out to prove something? I do. I do feel real good about the balance on the roster and just want to keep balancing that moving forward. Do you want to talk about Jareem Dowling, the assistant coach for you guys? Is he almost like your docu documenter because he walks around with that phone with the noise <laughs> on? Well, you know, Jareem, he keeps us all out of trouble yeah, you're because video. our wives can figure out where we're at and what we're doing just <laughs> by following him. Uh, the only time I really get in trouble is when he's not with me because then I have to remember to text my wife and tell her where I'm at and what I'm doing and stuff. So, uh, yeah, we, we absolutely love Jareem. And, uh, he's, he's a terrific human being, um, a terrific basketball coach. Well, if Jareem's specialty is IG, Instagram, Urix seems to be ping pong from what we've heard from having him on recently. We've heard about some epic battles between you two. So I guess if I, if I give you the opportunity to ask, I will ask, who is the better ping pong player, you or, or Urix Malagy? Well, Urix is up right now in, in the series. He won the first match, right? And uh, now if this is the NCAA tournament, then Urix advances and I'm out. But, right. You know, we don't do the NCAA tournament of ping pong. Um, where, you know, this is going to be like an NBA 7 Series kind of thing. And so th there will be a rematch. Okay. Is there a player that can give you a run? You know, I'm really not that good at, at ping pong. Oh. That's, like, not my thing. I, I think I can do a little bit of everything. What's your specialty? But, um, man, I don't know that I'm, I'm really good at, at like, any of the, the games. Like, I don't play video games. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, miss, I need a joystick. I'm <laughs> okay with anything with a joystick. All the buttons, they confuse me. Um, I play a little pool. I was going to say, I okay. You know, I, I, play I, I play a little pool and play a little ping pong. But, I, you know, I definitely could have fared better than I did the first time with him. And, and so um, uh, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Mark, he's told us that David is a pretty good Ping pong player too. I heard. FYI. I heard David is pretty good. Um, actually, the other day at our retreat, uh, Adub coach Anthony Winchester, oh, yeah. um, he smacked York. Wow! I'll, I'll smacked him. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was like yeah, because when 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 you when you win, then uh, you get the and the new heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> oh yes, okay. Anthony Winchester. You know, so he <laughs> he's got the belt right now. Uh, so Coach Yurik might be in his garage, you know, practicing. I, don't know. <laughs> I saw a video of that. Yeah, it was yeah, like the Rocky know. theme song, and he's yeah, like just yeah. swatting the ball back <laughs> yeah. and forth. Yeah. Yeah, when it yeah. comes to the coaches that can hoop, is Winchester's up there too as well, right? Yeah. Well, you know, Winchester and Rodney Perry, you know, the other day somebody in, in one of our meetings said that, you know, A-Dub was the best player on staff, and Coach Perry begged to differ. You know, I mean, mm. A-Dub's in a Hall of Fame. Coach Perry's in a Hall of Fame. You know, there's – so we're, we're, we're going to, we might, none of our wives are going to let us settle that on the court. <laughs> we'll just keep arguing. I was going to say, if you guys ever want to have a game, you know, we'll, we'll broadcast it for you. If you guys want to do like a coaching staff game, we can take care of that. Hey, we really appreciate you taking so much time for us. Uh, incredibly excited to watch you guys get out there and, and do what you do out on the floor this year. Well, man, I appreciate all y'all do for K-State Athletics and our, our basketball program. Keep up the great work and 
look forward to a, a, a great run. Absolutely. Right. Appreciate you, Coach. Thank you. Go Caps.